how's it going, Dow? Good. Um, Shane was talking yesterday about how he called some NFL coaches to try to figure out how do you practice with you know such smaller numbers. Obviously, you have a lot of experience with that. How do you practice when you've got an injury situation like this? Yeah, um, the NFL becomes more about service team, so it's like your first offense practicing a second team defense. When we get into problems here, what makes it tough is you have six or seven scholarship offensive linemen on IR. Or I don't not IR, but that's what we called it in the NFL. Um, <clears throat> but that aren't available to practice, so then it becomes a it becomes a challenge for the defense, making sure they get. And all of a sudden, you're playing, you're going against three offensive linemen and two tight ends playing offensive line. So the challenge, uh, coach asked me about the other day is like, hey, what's the fewest offensive linemen you've ever gone into a game with? I'm like seven, which is really scary. And normally it was eight or nine, but because um, we were, you know, counting our numbers, saying like, hey, who's going to be available for this game? It definitely becomes a challenge. What what can the bigger challenge becomes this? It's when guys like Nick G start taking more reps than they normally take in a, in a, a, on a tough schedule playing in this conference. All of a sudden, the wear and tear in their body becomes more because, you know, it's got it. Someone has to take the reps. So now all of a sudden, instead of in a 10 play rack where they normally take six, well, now they're taking eight. Well, that cumulative effect of like eight plus eight plus eight plus eight starts stacking up on you because that's how you have to practice that way. Looking back to last weekend was just the red zone stuff. What, yeah, just most frustrating. Yeah, you get in the we attempted five field goals, made four, and that's the difference in a conference game. Like you can't get down there and we it wasn't a move the ball issue, it was a finish the drive issue and get down there and, and we have been successful in the red area and we didn't play the way we wanted to down there and you settle for field goals and every time you do that it's four points that you're losing and those uh you gotta score touchdowns and um in that situation and and we didn't and it, it hurt us. Yeah, kind of going off that in those fourth down situations where you guys sell for field goals, was that something you agreed on doing with Shane? Were you all bored with kicking field goals instead of going for it? And if you guys ever do have a disagreement, you and him, how do you guys go ahead and kind of handle that in the moment? Number one, he's the head coach. There's not really a disagreement. If if he wants my opinion, he asks. Uh, he knows in, in each series as it starts, um, it's, it is a good question. And it's, it's like inside at some point we'll put – you know, make headsets live, and they'll end up doing the NFL, and then all you guys, all the fans and stuff, will see the real craziness of coaching. Um, and we're not well-adjusted people, but um, uh, in those situations, most time, coach says, "Hey, you got four downs," and then all of a sudden, like now, that where it gets tricky is, you know, hey, it's like you got four downs, and then all of a sudden, you have a negative play on third down. There's a sack or something like that. Then it becomes. Um, it becomes now you got to reassess really, really quickly um, in that situation too. Like you got to look at it like this. Um, of course, as the offensive coach, I always want to go for it. Um, coach, coach is extremely aggressive, but it's also like, hey, we, we didn't play very well on third down. And if you don't play well on third down, like, do you like are we gonna are we gonna miss a third? Like if we just didn't execute on third down, and you, all of a sudden it could, becomes fourth down, or like, hey. In situations we have, it's like, well, we made a play on third down and making a fourth and manageable. So there's a part of managing the game as well and assessing the game as how it's going. Um, and we need to give them more confidence. And there were some things on third down. And, uh, well, suddenly it's the first series where we get down there and, and we pit, we don't pass a game. And we're on the 20-yard line. It's like third and five, third and six. And um, and we, if we pass it, we're actually uh, – Harbor's going to catch the uh, the end cut for first down. But we don't pass and we take a sack. And all of a sudden, that bat, now it's like fourth and 14. And like now percentages, like once you get past that fourth and six marker, like you're better off taking the points in that situation. So um, it becomes a feel. Um, Coach Beamer does a really good job communicating on what he wants to do before the series starts. And there's been times when he's asked, um, like, hey, what do you guys think right now? Do you love – do you love, you know, this call? Do you love a call right here? And most of the time, like, hey, fourth and six or less, you really like it. You got, you feel good about it. And it starts to get into longer yardage situations. And um, you're not handling their, their games and the pass rush up front as much. I think that also gets thrown into it as well. I know you've talked about this a little bit in the past, and I'm assuming you're not dealing with any of the message board stuff. So this is kind of just more so be, answering. That would be true. Yeah, answering yeah. it for them. I know on the outside, some people look at it saying, you know, on the offensive line, insert this player here, and everything can figure it out. But as you yeah. know, it's obviously a rapport thing. How much of that is challenging with the injuries that you've gone through this season? And, again, obviously we've seen certain issues on the offensive line with certain players, but you're trying to figure out still the best formula for that week. Yeah, it's um, – I wish it was plug and play. We'd be in a lot better situation right now. Uh, 
you get really frustrated with what you, we could be in the passing game if we were better that way, for sure. Um, got a lot of faith in number seven and finding the right guys. And um, 17 is obviously a really good player. And Nick Harbour starting to come on. Some other guys starting to come on a little bit. Um, but it doesn't work like that. Like, you're talking about you put your best five out there and look at where who we started in North Carolina to where we're at now. And we're not talking about excuses. We're talking about reality. And some players are playing right now that – are playing out of position and probably shouldn't be playing if things were if the depth was right and where it was, should be. Um, guys are playing before they're ready to play. Um, that's the cold reality of it. And people like don't make excuses and all that other stuff. Like those aren't excuses. Those are just facts. Um, if they were the best guys, they would start the season that way. If they were the most ready to play, they would start the season that way. Um, so there's some guys that um, you look at this as a like they're getting better to throw in the fire. Um, you know, obviously it's not it's not the most ideal situation. But it's our job to coach them, make them the best that they can be and uh, have success in this conference where it's really good defensive lines. So I think, it's a, I think it's a challenge that we all understand. I think you understand it when you ask the question. It's not a plug and play. It's that simple. Um, it's also guys playing out of position. It's guys are playing to their strengths. I mean, look at how many like, spots Nick G and Vershawn have played. You know, and like, They're just moving around all of a sudden. Like, they're unselfish. They don't care. It's like whatever's best for the team. Guy moves from center to right tackle. They, how much does that happen? Uh, all of a sudden, the left guard moves to center. And now, all of a sudden, the center has to make the call. Well, now he's playing with next to Trey Jones and Tree. Well, you guys think Trey Jones – or do you think Trees are ready out there uh, – as a freshman, is out there ready to make every call and knows what he's looking at half the time? Or even Tro playing next to him. It's why Vershawn bumps to right tackle, and all of a sudden, Tro has his best game because he's got a, a veteran sitting right next to him telling the calls. And that, that thing is – that thing affects everything as well. It affects how they each play together. And sometimes, like, Troll in that situation benefited because all of a sudden now you've got this veteran that tells me what to do every snap. Now I get to go use all those abilities that we recruited. Why, that's why we recruit him because he's big and powerful and strong. He's just playing. He's young. He's, he has no experience. Um, and then when there's no experience, there's nothing to fall back onto. So every time he's doing something, it's the first time he's doing it. Like he's facing a mint front for the first time. He's facing double mug for the first time. He's facing a bear front for the first time. He's got spinners for the first time. He's got a split mug for the first time. And all of a sudden, it's like, hey, I got this guy that's really smart telling me what to do. Like, it's pretty good. Like, I got that. But now all of a sudden, when it's a guy with less experience, and, like, we're both kind of looking at each other like, hey, are we, are we being this? Are we seeing it? Are we money in this? Like, that's where the challenges really start to affect your team and affect, like, the continuity and, like, getting to play together for – a, you know, a whole game, a second game, a third game, and practice together. Yeah, that would definitely help. But we don't, we don't have that luxury right now. Yeah, Shane talked a little about this yesterday, but schematically, you know, with the injuries you guys are dealing with, with the injuries to the receivers and things, are, are there things that you can do to try to protect Spencer better? Are there things that you can kind of coach him to do to protect himself better? You know, as you're going into now, you know, the late half of the season. Yeah, and Nick G and I were laughing about the other day. He's like, man, we chip and nudge. When a chip is, when a back is chipping a defensive end, a nudge is, we call it like, hey, he's nudging, the tack, uh, the tight end is nudging the uh, defensive end. We do that more than any team in the country. Um, which also like hurts getting guys out, like distribution. Like I, you go back and you look at the, some of these early games, like we're getting five guys out, we're emptying the emptying people out and all that stuff. And now we're trying to help our tackles more. Um, and for Spencer, it's still the same. Like Spencer wants to make plays. Spencer wants to win. Spencer wants to sit in the pocket and do what he needs to do to win games. And it's also, there's a fine line of like, Hey, throw it away, throw it away. We'll, we'll we can kick field goals. We can punt. Like don't take, don't take unnecessary, you know, lost yardage plays, especially on first and second down. And most of the, a lot of the sacks are coming on third down uh, when it's known um, pass situations. All of a sudden, like when we're going first down, second down, first down, the sacks aren't aren't happening as much because you're not getting into third and seven plus. Um, so for so that, and we're mixing in seven-man protections. We're doing different things to help schematically that way. And Spencer sometimes is at the mercy of the protection and how we do. And it's not just the offensive line. It's the tight ends. It's the running backs. It's the wide receivers uh, creating separation. Um, and Spencer throwing on time. It's it's all of it. It all ties in together. And right now we're not where we need to be. On the uh, the receiver front, obviously, you know, injuries are, are plaguing that too. I think, uh, you know, Nick's been talked about a lot. But another guy that probably has to step up, Omega Blake, what have yeah. you seen in, in his maturity since you've got here and his growth? Yeah, um, I don't think Omega played his best game last week, and we've talked about that with him, and he knows that. Um, we're, we've got to get Omega to where he's playing more confident. 
Uh, he cares deeply. Um, he's got twitch in his body. He's got he's got NFL twitch in his body. Um, well, he can he can separate. He can, but as long as he's playing fast, and he's got to get to the point where he trusts himself to go play fast. Um, you know, and it what happens, and I think I mentioned this a little bit. Um, we move Xavier so much. So, Zabro's moving all over the place. And then it, it, it creates a little bit more of a mental burden on everyone else because one one formation, he's the Z. One formation, he's the X. One formation, he's playing running back. And everyone else has to learn around that as well. So, Zabro can handle it. But it's the other guys, like, all of a sudden, it creates doubt in their mind. Um, so, and then last week when, when, obviously, he went down after the kickoff return, um, then all of a sudden the rest, we get get the deck reshuffled a little bit. So we got to get uh, Omega to the point where he feels confident, he trusts himself to play up to his speed because a player that's thinking is not attacking. And that's been Coach Beamer's point to us is, guys, we got to cut down some mental clutter on some of these guys. And some of it just happens naturally when you're moving a receiver as talented as Zabro is around. Um, the burden sometimes you know falls on the other guys. Dell, uh, last week I think it was at Carolina Calls. Shane Beam was talking about how Jatavia Shivers has had some really good yeah. practice in the last couple of weeks, and I know this probably goes above you, but it's probably a combination of you, you know you bring and Shane playing another freshman. Well, no, no. My point, my point being is at yeah. this point of the year, and it's easy to just bring him up for example. How do the conversations go throughout the year when you have a player that's only played one game at this point, and there could be certain positions on the offensive line or any position that you feel like, okay, we might need either someone to start or they need some more depth, but at the same time, too, you're looking at what's in the best interest of the player and for the program moving forward, knowing that he's, you know, he has X amount of games in order to continue to maintain his year of eligibility. Yeah, I feel like we're back in the NFL. We're talking about tanking for a quarterback here. Uh... No, it's a great question, and it's it's real, and those are the discussions that happen. Um, and when you like, it is, and it's it's all of it's. It's not like one say, like, hey, what's best for the team? What's best for the player? Um, you get four games to play, guys. Um, and you'd love for all your freshmen to be able to play four games and keep their red shirt year. It's something that we talk about constantly here, and not just at offensive line, but every position. And we've got a couple guys that all of a sudden you really want to red shirt them, and you want to give them that you know that extra year. But then injury starts occurring, things happening, and you, they have to be – it's really an unselfish act of the, from the player as well to be like, hey, you know, um, Tashon's a kid. We had to make a kid. Like, we can't – you can't play six snaps if we're going to – we have to make a decision. Is he going to play? If he's going to play, let's go ahead and play him. And if he's not, then let's stop doing that and get the other guys ready. And Shivers has – he had two good weeks, um, and he, he showed up. And he's – so, and, and we knew he needed some development. Um, he was a kid that was committed when I got here. And – um, a talented guy, but um, he, and he has practiced well the last two weeks, and we're going to continue to develop him. Is he ready to play right now? No, heck, no, he's not. Does that mean he might? Not? Does that mean in a week or two he could be playing? Sure, he he better be ready. He better attack every day that way. As a coaching staff, that's a week he preaching to these guys is like, hey, you're competing to take someone's spot. You're competing to be the best version of yourself. And the worst thing you can do as a freshman is when you get in that thing and you start thinking, like, hey, I'm not going to play. I'm going to redshirt. And all of a sudden, your number's called. And maybe you didn't take advantage of that Friday lift the last six weeks. And maybe you didn't take the advantage of watching tape because you become complacent with, I'm redshirting. It's not that big of a deal. I fight my quarterback, my freshman quarterback, all the time on that. I'm really, really hard on him because of you can't fight the complacency of, hey, I played in one game so far. Like, no, 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 no. Like you're always a player or two away from playing. You better be ready when your number's called. You better be ready for the moment. And the only way you can do that is through preparation. And it's not just here. It's watching tape afterwards. It gets hard. Like they're they're kids. They're humans. Like you go home at night and you're not in the you're not you didn't travel last week. You think you really want to turn on the team run and watch the 12 plays of team run to get a mental rep? Like no, they want to hang out with their boys and run around 650 and chase girls and do all the stuff that kids do. Like. Um, but it's like we keep grinding on those guys because at some point you have to make decisions. Sometimes you don't have the luxury of red shirt. And so it's extremely, um, it's extremely unselfish for those guys as well when it's all of a sudden like, hey, your number's called. Maybe it's not what you wanted. Maybe it is what you wanted. But when, the, when your number's called and the team needs you, you've got to be ready. Uh, we'll just get one in here about Saturday. You faced DJ Durkin defense at Ole Miss. You faced A and M every year. That you, every year you were at Arkansas. Kind of yeah. what is the challenge Saturday? And how do you go about building a game plan against that front? They've uh, that front's good, and they've done a good job. You know, faced them at Arkansas last year. You could just tell they were young. Um, now you can see that they've played young players, and they weren't. 
they were talented last year, but they're not as good as they as they are now. So they they had to go through some of the struggle to get to where they're at now, and they're playing really well up front. Um, you get into third and long versus group, and third and seven plus, you're gonna have problems. There's very few times you turn on the cut ups and you say, "Hey, here's the third and two to three, uh, the third and two to three cut up," and there's no reps. And all of a sudden you turn out, well, let's look at four to six. I think there's eight reps for the season. Then all of a sudden you turn on the third and seven plus, and there's 48 reps. You can see what the front does to uh, to opposing teams. Like it's a talented uh, talented front. They're well coached, and Coach Fisher's done a really good job recruiting. Uh, the defensive line coach and uh, Coach Durkin have done a really good job uh, using the pieces they have, and they are extremely talented. It'll be the best front we faced, and we faced some pretty good ones with Missouri and um, Tennessee and Georgia, and even North Carolina. The number twenty-five is a really good pass rusher for those guys, but this will be the biggest challenge of the year for us, and. Uh, and it will, it, you know, like it always does, it'll start up front. Appreciate you guys.